Well, Brian, man, so great to connect. We got to connect on Clubhouse. It was like a late night. You were battling with Brian Fanzo, who I know is a, a friend of yours, about which is better, Brian with an I or Brian with a Y. <laughs> and I happened to be some random person to join your conversation on Clubhouse. And from there, we direct messaged on Twitter. And now we get to record a podcast together. And I'm just so thankful that you're here, man. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I I yeah, that's right. We we did meet on the I versus Y uh um uh channel on Clubhouse. I forgot that was the one because there's a lot of different clubhouses going on when that whole thing sparked. And um and then uh yeah, I think you and I popped on to a bunch of clubhouses or a few of them anyway. And I love how the the relationship has developed. So thank you so much for inviting me here. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Well, we're so thankful for you to give us your time, and for everyone who's listening or watching this, um, I'm gonna late put. I'm gonna we're gonna give him all the plugs at the end, but you can feel free to drop into the description. Go to BrianKramer.com. That's Brian with a Y and Kramer with a K. I love how you said that at the beginning, right before we hit record. And you can go to his website and check it out. But Brian, I know that we were just chatting about the different state of business, the different state of events, and you were you were sharing how the thing that you're most excited about right now is about how businesses can make these small shifts. It doesn't have to be a, a huge revelation or this really large announcement or this incredibly uh I don't even know how this astronomical shift in their business. It's really small things that are going to make the biggest difference. Why, why is it so exciting for you right now? Yeah. Um, well, so it's, it's exciting right now because I've been through a lot of different change. And I think a lot of people have, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that everybody has in the world <laughs> that everyone's gone through a shift of some I kind. I know we have. I know and, we have, that's for sure. Yeah, and so I think I think shifts are happening everywhere right now and I'm I'm very fascinated with what shifts are going to take place now because of what's gone on and so um there's there are different ways that that people and brands uh shift because of how we respond and maybe some react and some are uh, some were proactive, some are reactive. Um, there are ways that, you know, we are, uh, some companies were bulletproof and some were not. Uh, and uh, there are different ways that we can, we can prepare ourselves for what's even coming next. There's a lot of different things that are coming uh, next. Uh, who knows what that is? A lot of things could be different in 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 what happens next. Um, I wish I had a fortune ball, cookie, whatever you want. <laughs> and, um, it just depends, I guess, who's the manufacturer of both of those. And um, and so uh, so one of the things that fascinates me is just why why not make it a small shift? Because we can't really predict what the big shifts are anymore. Uh, those are gone. Um, technology uh, shift was a big shift. When you look at um, you know all the big shifts uh, in our lives, th that those were um, those were incredible shifts. Um, uh, things that we can point to, and that's not to say they're not going to happen again. But right now, I think in the in the near future, when I say that, I mean the next like three to five years, with the exception of um, you know major things like autonomous or um, or uh, energy and solar. But even still, when you look at that, um, you know AI, augmented reality, uh, artificial intelligence, things like that, those things are um, those we know about them. We know that they're coming. We know what what basically they're capable of so okay we've got our finger on the pulse of what those are so now let's look at the little shifts of what it's going to take to get there and, and even more so what matters to us for individually and to each of our companies um okay let's boil that down to uh how to have experiences in in events um now let's boil that down to the next six to 12 months or the next year and a half and what's what is the human relationship with each of those different things and and i think that comes down to small shifts so um you know because as psychologically speaking what am i okay with what are you okay with i think we're all okay with now at this point 
intimacy. We're all okay, let's say, with intimacy, intimate moments, getting together in smaller groups and being okay with that. Um, and that's just that's just because of where we've come from. Um, now, I'm not speaking on, on behalf of the whole. There's probably people that would disagree with me and they're like, bring it on, let's go. And okay, that's fine. I'm just saying that, that, that for the most part, if you bring something back to in totality and go for the whole uh, enchilada, it's going to be a little bit too much. So we're going to have to adopt a little bit more at a time and, and create, um, you know, as we go, um, which which we've always done. But more intimate moments, more intimacy, I think that's where it's going to be. And that's smaller shifts that can apply to events, that can apply to uh, marketing, that can apply to sales, that can apply to every single area of your business. And that can apply to your own life growth if you want to adopt it there. Um, so I'm fascinated by that. And just to carry that even further, sorry, I'm doing a lot of talking here, but just to like accentuate that point, just to accentuate that point, just like to really drive it home, um, there's... Um, you know, even today on aircraft carriers, I just, I learned this a little, not too long ago, that on aircraft carriers, they still have the compasses, the old, comp not, you think they're old, they're, they're really still technologically sound, the old, the compasses that have those uh, uh, solid glass domes, and, um, and they turn, uh, depending upon what direction you're heading, and they, those glass compasses still sit there and drive the, the direction of the ship. Um, and those have to be recalibrated once a year by an, an engineer that comes in and recalibrates those compasses. Now, why? Because they're off if you don't recalibrate them by one degree over the course of a year. Now, a recalibration of one degree for that ship to be off by one degree over the course of a year is something like 277 miles. For a ship to be off 277 miles is a lot for that ship to be off. Now, you think about that and just adopt that kind of thinking in terms of just like your life, or you take that up a level to a size of a company of a sales force or an IBM or a Cisco, or you take it to a mid-level mid company, um, you name it. I mean, every company in between, every company at a one degree shift is 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 astronomical. So do we really need to be looking at 90 degree shifts or 50 degree shifts or 180 degree shifts, pivots as we call them? Um, not really at this point, at this point where we're at. Yes, we needed to pivot last year. A lot of companies needed to pivot last year, but moving forward now um, in where we need to be and how we need to grow and just being kind to ourselves even, uh, that's where I'm kind of seeing things. So I'm, I'm really fascinated with it for that reason. Well, and I think what something that you you said is fascinating. I love the metaphor of recalibrating the compass of the ship because I I've heard before someone talk about like if if a rocket that was headed to the moon were one degree off, how many many miles it would be, and it makes me think that businesses, uh, if you're planning an event. Or if you're just thinking strategically for your products, your services, if you're calibrating something, we can either we can do one of two things. We can either recalibrate and go back to something old that we were doing before, or we could calibrate and try something new, right? Those are kind of the two options that we have. So I love that metaphor and be able to think about that. And specifically, maybe um, so uh, specifically for the purpose of this conversation with business growth, right? Now that the world has been forced to go online for events when it was 2020, and now we're starting to open up, there's this big hypothetical conversation that's happening in the events world of, well, what's going to happen? Are we going to even have online events more? Are we going to have hybrid events where we've got in-person audiences and online audiences? And I know that your book, I love the title of your book. I love how it's it's not B2C, it's not B2B, it's human to human. So what would you, what would you recommend companies think, how would you recommend and companies calibrate strategically for their events plan moving forward now that we have all these new capabilities for online events and we can go back to in-person events what types of questions should people be asking and how should they be thinking about their strategy for business growth specifically with events and our new capabilities that we have yeah well you know there's not one answer for that that's a that's going to be a, a, a conversation that's going to be also 
um, you know, happening over the by the end of this year, because I I, I think that by 2020, um, I, the Roaring Twenties uh, will will be back in 2022, um, and we're all going to be like, oh my God, what has just <laughs> happened? Um, and and things are gonna, things are going to change radically. Um, now the ambivert in me will not be as excited half the time because I'm going to wish and miss like what just happened. Cause I really do love, um, intimate, more intimate moments. Um, the club clubhouse was so fascinating to me because I actually got more done on clubhouse than I do at most events, um, where I got to meet people like you and had a conversation. Um, like I, like, what was it? Taco versus pizza. Um, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> what a great question. And, and you got me thinking and then we connected and man, um, you know, uh, would I have met you in a hallway and just had that conversation mm -hmm. at an event randomly? Um, I don't know. Um, are our events at good at doing that? Like bringing people together randomly? Um, I don't think so. Are they good at bringing people together um, for a re business reason, yes, absolutely. And but um, I want to align more with more with individuals and humans on a on a personal level, and then I want to do business with them. And that's what that's what we all want to do. So can we take that lesson away and learn from that and use that? Um, that's the that's the thing that like let's learn from what we just learned uh, we just did in this last year. Um, let's bring that hallway conversation into events and understand that that's what people really thrive from. Now, I don't know if the word, I'm not really a, a I, I know I'm going against the grain on a lot of the things you just asked me about. Maybe I, I, I will, a lot of events, people will look at me and go, oh my God, what, who is this guy? But hybrid isn't really a term I, I personally uh, identify with. I don't think it's a, it's a, um, this or this and this it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it, it can be both. Um, and what I mean by that is you can have two experiences. And so I don't know if I tie the two together and here's why I think they're two totally different experiences. Um, my son goes to school and he's sitting at home while there's people in the class and they're having a totally different experience. And the teacher doesn't know how to cater to both. Uh, the teacher has people in the class and he's passing out papers and he can't seem to get the people at home to, to feel and touch and, and understand what's happening 3D in, in that experience. And then when, when he's doing things and the cameras aren't full, you know, in, in that situation and it's not fully experienced in this way, then the experience is just not fully there. Will it be someday? Absolutely. Is it absolutely the, the technology for the, for the, um, for the, um, uh, the senses for our human senses to fully take in everything that we we need when we're on site not not truly and so um so i i still think that there's a lot of work to be done to fully adopt the word hybrid um and so we we're gonna have to treat each scenario i think a little more separately in order to give each person who's either in one or the other a full experience rather than saying we're gonna go hybrid um and that's you know, when you are full in hybrid mode, um, you know, maybe it's the way that you define it. It's like, okay, for this part, we're going to do online. And then for this part, we're going to do, um, you know, in person, but to say like, um, you know, we're going to have an, an in person. And for those of you at home, you're going to do this. I think there's a little bit more of a segregation and it's not going to come together so well. That's my belief for now. And that's where the work needs to be done so that eventually it does need to happen. It will feel, um, it will feel uh, more, um, more real, but I just don't see that happening anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, so those are two very awesome conversations that I love having with people because I also believe like there's, it depends on how you define something. That's something that you said, right? It depends on how you define the hybrid because one thing that I'm passionate about is there's a difference between having an in-person event and then you stream it online. I would not define that as a hybrid event. You're just live streaming the event, right? right. And then uh, to the flip side, there is a hybrid event, which 
merch. Um, we'll uh, in the the post editing. We'll have to put this on the YouTube. I can't show it to you right now because I don't have that right now. But and if you're listening to this, you'll just have to imagine like I'm describing it to Brian. But we have drawn this image where there's two separate lines, and the two lines that come at come point they merge and then you separate them again and then they merge and then they separate them again. And that's what we've been preaching as far as hybrid events go, because like you said, they're two separate audiences. Mm -hmm. You've got someone logging on a computer, you've got someone sitting there in a chair and there are these two separate uh, experiences that at some point you do need to merge because you need them to experience the same content, but then you might have them interact in some way at home while they're on their computer or on their phone or on their tablet. But in the room, they're actually like standing up, they're going around, they're doing this thing, or they're writing on this thing. And you can hand out things that you can't hand out when you're online. So I love the distinction of what you made there. And then I was thinking about this. So I don't want to skip past something that you said earlier, because I 100% agree with you with how we met on Clubhouse. I feel like online when someone is there to authentically like meet new people and have a conversation, they're actually there to do it. Whereas I've attended networking events in person and they're, I'll just be honest, they're not my favorite because a lot of times I go to these things and it's people who already know each other that haven't seen each other in a while. And they just want to spend time with people that they already know. And I'm there because I need to meet new people that I don't already know. And so I feel like this outsider coming in. So even while you're talking, I had this idea, what if we, with for event strategy, specifically for online or even in-person events, but you can do something like clubhouse rooms, or you can do Zoom meetings, or there's this new program. I got a friend who works at this company called Twine, where they pair you one-on-one with people. You're shaking your head. So uh, if you're listening to this, Brian's shaking his head. He's heard of it. And you can meet people. And I feel like online, more people are willing to make that connection. And then you get them together in person and it feels much sweeter to be in person and get to meet each other and know each other. So I love that you're talking about that. So if someone, um, now that we've talked about both, about the hybrid experience and the the difference between on-person and, and events, that kind of thing, how does this tie back to people's businesses, right? Because if, if I'm a business and I want to grow in 2021 and 2022 and beyond past the roaring 20s, What should I be thinking about that I'm not already, specifically with how to calibrate either my people, whether that's leadership-wise or as a manager or as the CEO? What should I be thinking about? Well, I think, um, you know, every person, every human being is unique and different. And um, we, we have to personalize everything for, um, for each kind of person that's out there. And I don't mean like, like down to, uh, down to uh, every single human being being so unique and different that could, because the the um, you know and being so data scientific that it's it's going to you know look look feel and and create like an, an insane amount of work and I know that there are people in this business that do this every day and they'd have a much more thorough answer on this and that's not where I'm heading what what I'm saying is that um, that each person, as we've discovered over the last year, um, actually um, shows up differently. Um, the way that they show up differently, and actually I covered this in my my second book, is around in shareology, which is around how they like to share and how they show up. Um, and uh, it's it's actually um, one of the things that um, you know I built off the New York Times um, uh, research group study uh, and. And it's in these six different categories of how people show up and share with each other, how humans share with each other. And and if you go to a, sing, a person and you ask them or you look at them and you say, will you will you uh, show up in an event or will you show up on social media or will you show up in in um, in marketing or in online or or in any different kind of way and you're expecting them to to do to act and be like every other human being in the same way, then you're you're going against the grain and you're actually sh- you're actually making it harder on yourself as a marketer or a salesperson. Or, or a company um, to uh, 
for the for them to um, be at your uh, event. And so, you know, start to understand your customer better. And we uh, again, nothing new there, but e eventually you can um, see how they would rather be tr treated. Um, and so you know, get that information from them, ask them that information, especially now over the last year, you know, they're going to be sensitive. There's a lot of sense, overly sensitive. And I don't mean that like as a, as a, um, a critique, I mean, with are sensitive coming back into the world again, um, understand the sensitivity level of each person and, 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 and have that at level of empathy for every single person and, and know that that em empathy exists. Let them know that that empathy exists. Now, those six different um, categories, I'll share that with you, um, that for every human being that exists is the altruist, the early adopter, the connector, the careerist, the boomerang, and the selective. Um, the altruists are the heart sharers. Those are the ones that are sharing from their heart on every single level. You know how they show up. They just love to give, 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 give. And you see them on social media every day. They're just sharing, sharing, sharing. And this is like coming from their heart. You know it, you know, with every ounce of their soul. Uh, the next one is the early adopter. They love to go out and buy new things and then teach other people around it. And that's this, their superpower. And the next one's the connector. They love to connect two people. You'll see them at a conference where they're like, hey, you, you got to meet this person over here. I'm going to go connect you with the other person. And then there's the careerist and the careerist loves to uh, be, they, they might be uh, educating other people. Um, they're they're uh, thought leaders. Uh, they like to learn things and then turn around and teach other people. You'll see them as keynote uh, or session leaders. Uh, and then boomerangs, boomerangs are, are session. Uh, they're the session uh, 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 moderators. So, uh, and you'll see them helping other people and, and they're community managers as well. Well, uh, they're, they may be the cheerleaders at the event conference as well. So these are the people driving questions and leading people. Um, they also are quite, they can be quite negative and they can lead a neg a negativity. So boomerangs can be your trolls, but we'll stay on the light side for today. So, um, and then selectives and the selectives are kind of more of your introverts. The, the selectives are the majority actually of all of those. Uh, there's a little selective in all of us and the selectives are the ones who get uh, a little overwhelmed or, and, or they just rather actually stay behind the scenes and they just w watch and they'll private message each other or text message each other. They're not really going to show up on social media that often. In fact, they're the most powerful one because when they do show up, everyone tends to listen because now all of a sudden you never hear from a selective. So when you do, you're like, oh my gosh, this must be really cool because we never hear from the selective. So those are the six. In fact, I have a, um, a calculator, a quiz, and it'll tell you exactly who who you are. Um, and we can share the link in in after the show if you want. I've had over 30,000 people take it and it shows you exactly who you are and, and uh, which of those six types. But um, at the end of the day, what I'm trying to trying to say is that um, you need to treat each person as, as if they are each unique unto themselves and how they show up with empathy around where they're coming from. And as they show up that way, then you're going to get a much better uh, um, uh, perspective so that they can, uh, you can make sure that they're having a great time. They're learning what they want and, and they're going to connect with the right people that make sense for them. Well, and I, sh I it's interesting because I went to your website and I took the test. I think this was like a week and a half ago and hearing you read through all six of them. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm so glad I got this one, but <laughs> I feel like I have a little bit of multiple ones that are in yeah. there. And uh, it's, it's really, I love the way that you broke that down. So one more time I've got, I wrote, I missed one, the altruist, altruist, the early adopter, the connector. I think there was one more after that before boomerang. The careerist. Careerist, got it. And then boomerang and selective, right? And if you go to briankramer.com, again, Brian with Y, Kramer with a K. Uh, funny enough, I said that to my dad last week, and he's like, I named you, Brian. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I'm so used to saying it. Um, so briankramer.com forward slash personal brand quiz. Um, but uh, yeah, um, those are the six, uh, altruist, early adopter, connector, careerist, boomerang, and selective. I love it. And we will definitely put that uh, link in the notes as well. Well, and so this whole concept that you were talking about, about personalization, 
is I think definitely important. And you also talked about the sensitivity, right? As things change, people are going to be more sensitive to certain topics. People are going to be more or less. And again, it's not just more, it can be more or less sensitive to certain topics, more or less sensitive to how you do something at an event or how you do something in your business, what you require of people. So I definitely agree with that. And so I love the concept you were talking about for shareology of how people share and how they like to show up, how they like to share and how they like to show up. And I think that's important for us as uh, specifically speaking to the crowd that's listening or watching this, that's of the events background, the events mind, the event planning, whether that's in your job title or your description or not. But your our audience likes to show up differently. They like to share differently. And I think both of those are super important to consider, not just beyond. I know that uh, a lot of us think about either extroverts or introverts and planning for both. And But the planning for all six categories of the, our audience to show up is super important also. So I love, I love that. Well, Brian, this has been so fun. Um, I feel like we could talk about this kind of stuff for hours, but I'm not going to keep you that long. Um, so you've mentioned a couple of links. Is there any, um, it, the, the title of the, before we go to your, like your social media one more time, the title of the podcast is Mic Drop Events. And the goal is to help people and equip people so that they can prepare their own events to have these mic drop moments. So for our audience, do you have either a mic drop thought or a mic drop statement that you'd like to close us off with? Yeah, I would love to. Um, I'll try to anyway. Uh, that's, that's <laughs> a, I, don't, I don't know if it'll be a mic drop on your end, but I'll try to. Well, I don't know. I can try, try to drop my mic. Um, <laughs> so, uh, um, I, uh, you know, the, the, when I wrote Shareology, um, it was about what, where, why, when, and how uh, brands and people share. And when I, when I um, took uh, over 250 interviews of all walks of life, I put all the interviews, 200, 250 of, uh, well, well over them, of, of everything, like CEOs of Cisco and MasterCard and, and CMOs and, and, and sociologists and psychologists and futurists and you name it. And I took all of the transcripts and I threw it into a word cloud, um, one of those word clouds, um, uh, uh, the uh, analyst uh, um, uh, uh, data uh, dump dump uh, uh, accelerators and I put it in there and um, you know it sorts it and it shows you which words show up the most and the word that that came up the very most for why people and brands share in this world is connection and so keep that in mind as you are out in why you're creating what you're doing and how you're doing it, the, the very base of what everybody is here for and what they're trying to do is because they would like to connect with the other human beings. And so if you keep that at the heart and soul of what you're doing, you're always going to win. So good. So good. I mean, there's so many things that went through my mind, why people share experiences like right now, the sporting the sports right now, as we're recording this are pretty big between baseball and basketball. So why people are going to the events, yeah. why people are having people over to their houses, they share for connections, yeah. why people share something personal. I, I had a, a personal connection with someone who, who DM me on LinkedIn because of something personal that I shared on LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. So why people share something personal. That's so good. So why people share is connection. Brian, that was awesome. Hey, I think that deserves a mic drop. Yours, yours, you got a boom mic, so you can't really do it, but you can do know, the, yeah. the mimic it right there if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian, hey, it's been such a pleasure to have you on. And um, I know I was on your website earlier. So if, again, it, uh, we'll say it for uh, everyone out there. Say it uh, for, we'll, sh we'll scream it from the mountains. Brian with a Y and Kramer with a K dot com. And so that's B R Y A N. K-R-A-M-E-R.com. And that's where they can find you on social media. If they want to get in touch with you to book you as a keynote speaker, they can do it as well, as well as your business. Is there anything else you want to leave our listeners with before we shut it down and they get to no. drop their own mic? We've, we've got a 10 week, uh, high intensive, uh, like MBA course on growing your, growing your, uh, your business. And so if you go to H number two, H, uh, growth.com, you can check us out there. And, and it's, uh, it's one of our, it's our, 
it's our best work. It's over 25 years put into uh, to put into that. So please check that out. But otherwise, yeah, BrianKramer.com. Thank you so much. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, Brian, it's been such a pleasure, and thanks for being here with us. Thank you. 